in the period from around 1054 to 1204, the Church of Rome gradually transformed itself from being a newly autonomous regional power into merging more and more into a new form of the old imperial city-state of Rome. This happened through a series of conflicts with the German Holy Roman Empire and an emerging new papacy through the papal reformations in the Church. And an important figure in this process is Pope Gregory VII, the great innovator, and his new outline of the role of the Pope in the document Dictatus Papae. In 1073, the Cardinal Hildebrand, who had been a major force behind electing Pope Nicholas II and storming the Lateran Palace in 1058, became the new Pope. He took the name of Pope Gregory VII, and this marked the beginning of an accelerated new phase in the process of transforming the papacy into a new form of a regional power. Just two years later, the new Pope wrote the Dictatus Papae, a new declaration of the papal powers and establishing a different kind of papacy that had ever been seen before. Among the 27 brief statements Pope Gregory VII announced. Only the Pope can with right be called universal. All princes shall kiss the feet of the Pope alone. It may be permitted to him to depose emperors. He himself may be judged by no one. The Roman Church has never erred, nor will it err to all eternity, Scripture being witness. The Roman Pontiff, if he has been canonically ordained, is undoubtedly made holy by the merits of Saint Peter. With this background, the papacy in Rome and the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, Henry IV, had increasingly deepening conflicts. In 1076, Henry IV rejected the Dictatus Papae, but only one year later was forced into a defeat through a civil war in Saxony where the princes chose to follow the dictate and rebel against the emperor. This led to the famous event in Canossa, where the emperor is said to have been standing for three days in the blizzard outside the pope's castle in order to receive absolution and to revoke his excommunication from the church in Rome. The situation between the Holy Roman Empire and the papacy continued to worsen after this, and seven years later, in 1084, Emperor Henry IV gathered an army and marched towards Rome. They reached the city walls and then broke into the city. The Pope was eventually forced to fortify himself in the Castel Sant'Angelo, but then suddenly the allies of the papacy in the south, the Normans, arrived with an army and their leader, Robert Discard. The plea for help from Rome had reached them in time, and after a brief battle, the imperial army of Henry IV was defeated and retreated. But then things suddenly got a lot worse. The army of 36,000 Normans decided to turn on the city and started a massive massacre of the unarmed citizens in the streets, burned down churches and took the rest of the population as captives. The whole city was left in ashes and Gregory had to escape. He then died just one year later in exile in Salerno in 1085. But in his last days by the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, Gregory VII still expressed deep gratitude for what he saw as the greatest cause of his life with the papal reformations. He considered it as a divine gift, with a hope that the church would one day return to her true glory and stand free, chaste and Catholic. On the Terrace of Wrath in Dante's Purgatory, written about 200 years later, the merging of the papacy and the empire is summed up and described poetically by the soul of Marco Lombardo. On Rome that brought the world to know the good, 
once shone two suns that lighted up two ways, the road of this world and the road of the divine. The one sun has put out the other's light. The sword is now one with the crook, and fused together thus must bring about misrule. And the fusing of the two sons and the misrule that followed was in many ways what came after the great schism between the Eastern and Western traditions in 1054 and the following decades of the Papal Reformations.